Library Buildings and Facilities, seeing a quorum of the Jones Library Buildings and Facilities Committee. Uh, I'm calling this meeting to order at 9.03. Um, so uh, let's see, let's perform a sound check to make sure everybody can hear and be heard. Uh, Farah? Yeah. George? Here. On the move at the, at the North Amherst Library outside. Uh, Alex Lefebvre, I'm here, and Sharon is here as yeah. well. Um, so pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting can do so by clicking on the live link to this Zoom meeting that can be found on the public meetings calendar on the Town of Amherst website or by dialing in by phone. The public is able to comment during the public comment segment of the posted agenda by raising their hand. This meeting is being recorded and will be posted on the library website. See, I've learned to change that at the last minute. Um, okay, so first uh, order of business is the minutes of June 21st. Um, does anyone make a motion to approve those minutes? Make a motion to approve the minutes. Great, second. Second. Lovely. Any questions, comments on the minutes? Okay, hearing none. Uh, Farah, how do you vote? To approve? Yes, yes. yes. Sorry. Sorry. No, that's okay. I'm, I'm not rolling on all cylinders. I haven't had breakfast yet, George. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and Alex uh, votes yes. Um, the second order of business that we have, it looks like we're going straight to public comments. I do see that we have three people in attendance, um, one of which is Nate Malloy. I don't know if Nate is gonna be pulled in later, but if anyone has a, a comment they'd like to make in the public, now would be the time you can virtually raise your hand and we'll bring you in. Okay, seeing none, uh, we'll move on to the next item of the agenda, which is the um, Community Preservation Act Agreement. So there was in our packet um, a Community Preservation Act grant agreement. Um, this is with respect to the uh, million dollars that the Friends of the Jones Development Committee applied for, uh, for special collections as part of the library project. And um, before hearing a motion, I actually have a couple of questions. Um, and since we have Nate with us, maybe Nate's the person who can respond to that. So I'm Nate, hoping Nate can hear us. Welcome. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm here. Ben, Ben Breger might be here as well, but I, I can, I'll make up some answers. I don't, <laughs> he's not in the audience. Oh, okay. So, All right. So, um, so I just, my question was, um, I mean, what was sent over to us seems like a pretty standard agreement for accepting CPA funds and, uh, you know, indemnification language and how the invoices are to be paid. And, you know, when we took, uh, when we received money relative to the chimney, et cetera, that made sense. But this situation is rather unique um, in the sense that it is, the project is being run by a town committee at this point, not a library committee. The invoices are being paid by uh, the town finance uh, director after approvals by a town committee. And the trustees have already signed a memorandum of understanding with town that we will pay the fund. So I'm, so this, this doesn't feel like a document that's, it feels like a, a standard document that's not representative of this sort of unique situation that we're in. And I'm wondering, because we have the MOU, like, do we need to be signing a document? And if so, we'd have to make a lot of changes this, to this one to sort of make it look like what's really happening. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a standard, you know, CPA grant agreement. It's yep. just a, you know, it'll be considered the contract between the town and the library so that we can encumber the funds to be paid out. Um, and if, um, you know, it may not be representative of the process for this project, I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't be too hung up on the language because I don't think that's, we're going to withhold funds. So Nate, Nate, you I just want to make sure that it's work performed based on the scope that was in the CPA proposal and what was funded. So, you know, it's a, it was pretty generic, but for special collections. And so, 
Um, you know, and I talked to Ben about this. I just said that, you know, we don't want to, you know, we, if we, if, for instance, usually we'd ask for, you know, um, a schedule of values if it, this was a project and when, in the payment request, once it's approved, you want to, we'd want to see that work had been done for special collection. So it'd be something similar. And it could just be that, you know, the OPM provides um, like a cover memo or cover letter, which is very brief with payment requests saying that, you know, this, you know, this has been spent on special collections, whether it's, you know, a design piece or construction, because I don't, you know, I don't think the work is going to separate it out as that on a schedule of values. So it's really then, you know, someone from the project side, uh, you know, um, you know, stating that the work's been done and, you know, maybe the trustees would, or Sharon, we'd, you know, we'd want someone from the library then to just confirm that. And that would be sufficient to process a payment, right? We just want to make sure that there is some confirmation that work was done according to the CPA proposal. So, um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I understand what you're saying about how it, it's really going to work, but, you know, really we just want some proof that the work was done and that the library approves of it and then we'll pay, we'll pay it. Yeah. And that all sounds great. But, um, when you say I, I, so I, I, my, my, my prior history was in, was in malpractice. So signing documents that aren't representative of agreements. I like, I literally can't recommend to the board that we do that. Um, so if it does like, you know what I mean? Like if the document yeah, yeah. doesn't, the whole reason for contracts, as you know, I've said this before, the whole reason for contracts is when things go sideways, you go to the contract. And so right. signing a contract that nobody intends to follow, there's no reason to sign a contract in that case. So can we then come up with uh, either a contract specific to, to this, or can we come up with maybe another MOU about how we handle the payment so that you guys can follow it? I mean, just something along the lines of what you just said would be great. And I would, no problems. Um, sure, yeah, I mean, do you have the version, do you have the CPA agreement in a Word document? I mean, we could just track change it and you could, you know, just change the payment section or something. Um, it's not just the payment section though, Nate. It's the whole, it gets into the whole thing. Like there's an indemnity clause. And again, we're like, it's who's paying, how's like literally every aspect of this language is you'd have to rewrite most of it. And I, and I think it would be far more cumbersome to try to finagle what we're doing into this document. Um, and again, I like happy to do whatever needs to be done. I just think it's a, it's going to be a lot more work to try to and, and we already have a memorandum of understanding with the town saying we're going to pay. Yeah. So let me, you know, right. Um, you know, the comptroller Sonia would, and, you know, accounting and Sean would want to look at it too. So I can reach out to them and just ask if there's a simpler uh, agreement we could get in place. Um, you know, the restriction that we, that those trustees have already signed is in place. So, you know, the big, usually with CPA funds, the, um, you know, it's really important is trying to get a restriction on the property, which we already have. And so we don't need to get a new one. Exactly. And really, it's just then, you know, right, how do we process these payments? So um, we will need a document, you know, some type of contractor document that's signed by the library in the town so we can encumber the funds. That's, I mean, that's really what accounting will need. So as long, I can just ask them what, what they need, what, you know, what, what would suffice. Yeah, and I would actually really love to hear if, if you could check in with Sean, because I mean, I, as far as, I mean, tell me if I'm wrong, Sharon, but Sean's paying the bills. So, yeah. right. Yeah. So I think like checking in with Sean about what makes sense and what's actually happening. Mm -hmm. um, and again, this is because the friends of the Jones right. are the ones who applied for this. So technically, like, I don't even, like, I don't know whether it goes to them and then we send it or whether it just goes directly. Like, was it, was it the friends? Of the, I thought it was the Jones, not, I don't know. We'd have to, I mean. Have to look. Yeah. Yeah, but, I'll have to look. I mean, they're the ones who did the application, but I'm sure the trustees ultimately had to sign off on it. But, right, so that's why I think the contract would probably be with the trustees or, you know, the, whoever would sign some, the, this, we'll call it a payment agreement, <laughs> would be yeah. the trustees in the town. Um, and I would have, and, and Sharon, we'd have to check too. Like, I don't know, I don't even, I don't even know, like, how the funds go. Like, I don't know who the CPA would issue, would they issue it to? You know what I mean? So I just think all those details need to be 
work yeah, it, so, and then we yeah. just formalize it and then we sign it. Right, well, so, so what we've been doing is uh, uh, the friends just pay the town directly. Um, but as far as uh, the, the bills, so the OPM would say, yep, here's the bill. This this work has been done. Craig would sign it. I would sign it. Sean Mangano would sign it. And then uh, town accounting would pay that bill directly to the, the contractor. Yeah, and for CPA, it's kind of interesting, um, you know, we'll enter into a contract with the entity that applied, you know, typically like a property owner or, you know, LLC or nonprofit or something. Um, but then sometimes we'll, it gets tricky. Um, sometimes we'll pay the vendor directly then, but then the vendor, you know, needs a W-9, it becomes, um, you know, part of the town kind of record. And um, we've been trying to get away from that, but the irony is most places apply for CPA funds because they don't have the cash flow to pay for the work. And so then how can they pay for the work and when we, then we reimburse them, right? So a nonprofit asks for 300,000 to do some work and then it's like, oh, well, you know, take out a, another loan for 300,000, but then we'll pay you back right away. And it's just, so, you know, it's, it's kind of strange the idea is that they are applying for these funds because they just don't have that money to do the work. And so, um, you know, sometimes we'll say, well, approve the payment from the contractor, we'll write that entity a check. And then once the check's received by, you know, the nonprofit or entity, they have to act on it and then pay the contractor. The problem there is it could take, you know, the town 30 days to make a payment, right? If you miss the payment cycle. And then by the time you get money to write up a contractor. So there's a lag there and some are understanding. And sometimes it's like, you know, do you really want to wait 60 days for a payment? So which, Let me talk to Sean. He's just saying, which to so, me yeah. even more makes me want to talk to Sean a bit because at yeah. the end of the day, like the trustees have said, you know, by the time this is over in five years, we will have given the six and a half million, which is inclusive of, you know, right. the, the CPA funds and how, how and when Sean wants to receive them is really up to the town, not and we've said, we'll give them as we receive them, which, you know, we get the first half million that we just wrote a check for um, before. So I, yeah, this, I, I really feel like this needs to be driven by town and then we'll happily, I would imagine, sign off on whatever makes the most sense for, for the town finance department, so. Yeah, I mean, typically, like I said, we don't pay, and you know, we pay for work perform, the town will pay for work perform. So you don't like, you know, forward it, you know, a cash advance or anything. Um, and so we just did this with Valley and we had a, you know, for their 132 Northampton Road project, East Gables. And, you know, they, um, it was a half million in CPA and we, they just invoiced us for all of that with one invoice. It's not, you know, it's, it's simpler because it's just, you know, the town and Valley, but, you know, they've incurred the cost. They've met the requirements of what the CPA agreement said. And, you know, we just, they just send an invoice and we're, the town will process it. Um, you know, it is different with the library. I think it's, it, I, I'm assuming it's a borrowing. So then we also, you know, I think it was, it would, we'd start drawing out this fiscal year, FY23. So, you know, it's like once we start, the question is like, if you don't think you need it for next fiscal year, then sometimes it's better not to start the borrowing, you know, and, and let it let it go for two fiscal years. Um, yeah. And and Sean has got the schedule because we get, we get money from the MBLC after certain milestones. And so there is a whole schedule of anticipated borrowing and when money will be paid. And so again, going back to, you know, sitting down with Sean and, and probably our OPM and just figuring out what makes the most sense and then putting, I, right. I don't think it's complicated. I just think we just need to figure out sort of what the pieces are and then write an agreement that matches that. And then we'll go ahead and, you know. Right. So, yeah, so you know, what, what, what um, precipitated this happening is originally, you know, I think Sharon reached out and said, oh, we may need confirmation that the town's money is available or as a, I don't wanna say a match, but that there's commitment from the town for the library to be able to apply for or receive um, other funding for the project. And so, you know, I had drafted maybe an award letter, which sometimes we send out and sometimes you don't when CPA funds are allocated. And so I think there had been a generic email from Sonia, you know, the other year, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't signed. So then we were thinking, okay, could the town manager really, that's the position authorized to say the funds are available. And so, you know, it goes back to, we can work on this agreement, you know, and we can try to figure out something really simple that works. And then the question also is if you need some, you know, something in writing and signed by the town um, stating that the funds are available or committed or something for 
um, you know, for other funding, just let us know. So there's a draft letter that I, you know, I've, I think I shared with Sharon at one point, and you know, we would just have to um, make sure that that's accurate, and then we can have the town sign it and provide it. So that, that's really why this started, right? And then I said, oh well, if we're starting this, we might as well just get the CPA agreement signed too, because you know, it's just easier to get it done with. Sure. Um, sure. Okay. Did anybody else have any questions, comments, thoughts? Okay. Nate, thank you very much for attending. Yeah. I appreciate, um, yeah, appreciate as always your attendance and flexibility around <laughs> unique situations. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I know it is. It is. And every time, every time there's something different, I work with first time homebuyer programs, just a quick anecdote. And, you know, one wants to refinance and then they said, oh, we're doing this. And, you know, it was a new situation for the program. And it's like, the town never likes to subordinate agreements, but it's like, you know, banks will say, well, we're not going to you know, have a $50,000 $50, of the town be above, you know, a refinance on a house. And so then, you know, it's been weeks of going back and forth in negotiations. And it's just, yeah, it, you know, it's funny that if you're not really flexible, then it's like, it just won't make things work. So yeah. um, it's great that we have good staff and you know, I've been reaching out to Sean and others about this other one too, a lot, just getting advice because we need, you know, we want to help people and make it work. So yeah. Well, I appreciate uh, it. So yeah, I'll reach out to Sean and we'll see how this can, I mean, I, maybe I'm hoping it's just like a one page CPA agreement then. Um, yeah, you know, great. The money's been voted, everyone, you know, it's not like it, there's a question about supporting the project. So it's really just how do we satisfy accounting? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. All right, well, we look forward to the, uh, whatever whatever comes our way that, that you're able to, to work out with, uh, with Sean and Sonia and everyone else in town. So thank you. Great. Yeah, and thanks thank so you much. for being responsive to our need to have uh, sure. a document so that you know so that we can apply for other grants. So appreciate right. that. Thank you, Nate. All right, thanks. All right. Um, so the next item on the agenda is the North Amherst Library Building Project. George, are you giving that because you're standing like outside? <laughs> I mean, I, I could because we have all these great visuals as long as I don't lose service again. Um, so where we are at right now, everything is out of the Montague Road property and either in the new temporary space or in storage. And we also did a lot of weeding. So everything is in here. Uh, the IT has been mostly set up. We should have phones by the end of the week. And we just this morning received some shelving, which I will be assembling today. Uh, I know there's no staff scheduled to be in the building today, but hopefully tomorrow when they come in, they can actually start shelving some books. Um, so that's a wonderful thing. Uh, we have not heard, the only other things beyond that are signage and uh, positioning the book drop outside the space and we are still waiting for confirmation that those site plan because they had to be a site plan change uh, so we're just waiting for confirmation that that has been approved by the town and that is being orchestrated by Arthur uh, here at the Coles property he's he's handling that part of it uh, so once that's done we can have the book drop outside and we'll have signage and it'll all be wonderful um, so yeah, I think that's where I'm at. I don't know if Sharon has anything to add to that or not. No, nah, just, you know, the mill district has been awesome. They've been so patient and, um, uh, staff are really excited to get in there. I, it's going to be a very cool space. There's more space, uh, there's seating, you know, space for the computers, uh, lots of parking. And it's just, what the mill district has there uh, for families. Uh, it, it's just one big playground actually. And it's just uh, lends itself beautifully to story times and things like that. So we're, we're excited to open. Yeah. Nice. Any, Barron, do you have any questions, comments? Um, I had one, I know that the um, district one neighborhood association, Dona, um, has, I think in the press release, they had talked about wanting to participate in opportunities uh, around programming. And I guess I just want to know, is there a timeline, if people are wanting to volunteer to help with programming or help with story times, is there 
how much time does the staff need to settle in before they can then sort of take volunteers to help them with things? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, so our head of branch services, Petra uh, Pendroft, just started what two weeks ago, something like that. Uh, so she, you know, she's going back and forth between the Munson and and, and the Mill District and. Uh, they're, they're all going to do it together, you know, so staff are really, um, you know, becoming one and uh, stay tuned. Okay. They'll make all sorts of announcements when they're, when they're ready. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay. Um, so are we going to open, if we don't have all of our shelving yet, if we get the signage and the book drop, will we just open with some some boxes or are we waiting until we get the rest of the shelving from town or what's do we have a plan around that the shelving just got here this morning so um i i but don't it's not know enough shelving, right i i don't think so but i don't know if we'll be able to get more so okay. we just don't know yet so if we can open with what we have we will yeah and if if you know if we can't get any more shelving then we'll put the rest of the books in storage okay got it good okay all right, I think the last item on the agenda is topics not anticipated by the chair. Oh no, that's not there, but I don't have any topics that I didn't anticipate, so um, yeah. Anything else or is that it? Okay. We did have a leak in special collections, not a leak, an HVAC problem. Oh, that's unanticipated. Again, because the AC? Um, yeah, one of the, you know, as we all know, there are three units above special collection storage and one of the units uh, froze up and of course proceeded to leak water, but no water got into special collections itself. Uh, we had a tech there yesterday. We thought out the unit. We have it running. They've pressure tested it and it seems okay, but we are watching it daily just to make sure that there are no issues. Oh. And I think this is the one unit that we haven't outright replaced mechanical parts on yet. Oh. So, okay. Well, so far, so good. Keep us, keep us in the loop. And thank you, George, so you know, for You're welcome. working at multiple buildings simultaneously <laughs> and, 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 and limping that system across. Barb, do you have a question? Yeah, this is about Jones. Um, Sharon, do we have any um, idea of possible places for? temporary locations for the drones uh, uh yes uh we we received um we have a couple of ideas and i'm not sure that uh i'm not sure that it's ready to be shared only because folks have reached out to us and now the opm needs to analyze and i i'd hate to say oh here's a possibility and then for everybody's hearts to get crushed okay so thank you um We'll see, but I, we are, I don't, it's what I have received is not enough square footage wise. So we still are looking for more possibilities, um, whether it's office space or really spaces to put the books, uh, you know, the, for adult circulation, that kind of a thing. Hmm. So okay. if you know anyone. Or do you have a hand up or are you? No, I don't have a hand up. Okay. <laughs> Tell if you're shielding itself laughing. from the sun. Yeah, okay. I'm shielding from the sun. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. All right. Um, then, if no one has anything else, yet another quick buildings and facilities meeting. So, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Twenty six. Thanks. Everyone. Have a great day. Bye.